I am live here with Pastor Robbie, or I was, and then I just lost her. So hopefully she'll be joining us here in a minute. Here she comes. Hope you are all doing well this morning. We are so excited to have our Pastor Rob Reddy Young with us today and to be chatting about our upcoming Orlando Con Women's Convention, Church of God Women's Convention in Orlando, this October 13th to the 16th. This is another one of our workshop leader lives today with Pastor Robbie. How are you this morning? I am great and excited to be here. We're excited to have you. How has the summer been going for you? Can you believe we're into July? No, time is going too fast. Um, summer is always a time of relaxation and vacationing, and that seems to move by pretty fast. It sure does. Pastor <laughs> Robbie, I know you're a busy pastor. You are um, leading people through these epic changes we're experiencing as a culture. Uh, how are things in your congregation? Are you guys back? Are you meeting uh, together uh, in in person, uh, how how have things been for you over the last couple uh, weeks and months? Things are going great. Um, I pastor Central Church of God in Chicago, on the west side of Chicago. Um, we have been back in person. Well, we do dual back in person and um, Facebook Live every Sunday morning, ten a.m. And we have been back in since last year, November. Okay. Um, and, and so our congregation, uh, we're not 100%. Um, everyone hasn't returned just yet, but everyone is either in person or online. And, and so we feel pretty good. Um, I'm excited because the the COVID has given us a new way to minister to our community. Never would have thought being online, uh, Facebook, know. you know, streaming every Sunday, but we have but done that. It. Yes, yes, and, and fairly successful. Yeah, because I mean, whatever we want to say about it, Pastor Abby, <clears throat> this, the, you know, the horrors of the pandemic um, really pushed us as a church into a new frontier. Yes, and it did. it's opened up new vistas for us to be able to connect with uh, and um, uh, reach demographics of people that we couldn't before. Right. So that, we're grateful. I'm grateful for you and for all of your innovation and um, the way you just said, let's figure, everything's figure outable, isn't it, Pastor Robbie? <laughs> yes. When you yes. have to, when necessity <laughs> is the reason, you just figure yes. it out. Yes, yeah. we do. And then with me being a teacher, I, you know, I'm always eager to, eager to learn something new to start yeah. with. Yeah. And then once I learn it, then I got to show somebody else. Yes. And and I just think that the time that we're living in is a very challenging um, time in that we my one of my philosophies are we are lifelong learners. Yes. And so being a lifelong learner, opportunities present itself for you to learn new things each and every day. Right. And so um, learning how to operate Facebook and Zoom and uh, Instagram and TikTok and all of the, the other uh, social media streaming, you know, uh, first of all, it keeps me young and, and in tune with with the young younger generation. And then it, it challenges me to be all that I can be. Yeah. And I say this all the time. You know, I think it's just like Paul uh, setting up uh, uh, his um, stand in the Agora in Corinth, you know, and becoming mm -hmm. a leather worker, right? Yes. He did that because he needed some sort of way to be able to travel, yes. to be able to, to have some sort of um, means that were, um, you could carry it with you. And he, he knew that in that city, people needed sandals and and leather awnings and and saddles and so he said well, let me do this 
um, because that way I can situate myself in the culture so I can speak to it. And I yes. think that's what we have to do, too, um, in our time, in our own agora, whatever that is. So, all right. Tell us a little bit about you. Uh, you we've mentioned that you're a pastor, that you're a teacher. Tell us a little about you, your family and uh, your ministry there in Chicago. OK, I am with me. I am single, never married, don't have any children. But I have a host of nieces and look and one nephew that we <laughs> cherish dearly. Uh, they are all grown. I have one great niece I call my poo, and um, she's the she's she's my life right now. Whatever she asks me, yeah. If if she she calls me Graham T. If Graham T. can get it for, her, then uh, she has it. Yes. Um, <laughs> That that's family, but along with that, I have a host of God children, God daughters, and I'm grateful that God has put these young ladies in my life. They see about me, they take care of me, they keep me, um, uh, keep me going. Yeah, you know, letting you know, you know, young young folks will tell you when you when you're in in tune and when you're out of tune. What looks right, what don't look right. Sometimes they don't bite their tongue, and we have to. <laughs> Take it with a grain of salt, right. but um, um, I, I thank God for the the life that I have um, personally. That He has really blessed me and surrounded me with resources that is very needed. And and the same thing with the church. I have the I have my church family, um, and I love them dearly, and I believe they love me. We take care of each other. Um, we we watch how God works within our group, um, and it's exciting to see Him. Uh, just just to see how God can maneuver. Um, some things He put on my heart, and by the time I get to church on Sunday morning, somebody is meeting me at the door with some of the same things, and and, and you know that's only God working. Yeah. And so it's it's an exciting time to be a Christian. Um, to see how God can work in these trying times when it seems like God is nowhere around, um, even in experiencing um, from a distance the the shooting in in Highland Park um, on, on Fourth of July, um, my my congregation interested in in making sure that you know things are taken care of and we're praying pastor you got to be praying now you got to be praying mm -hmm. and, and and you know it's it's just it's just exciting to see what god can do mm -hmm. um when you wholly depend upon him yeah so so you know it's that that's that's really exciting um at work i, I teach uh middle school math and <laughs> every, when I say math, everybody drops their head. I don't know but if it's math middle school is my or subject. math. Like that's like a double whammy. <laughs> <laughs> Your yes. mansion in heaven has got to be enormous. <laughs> <laughs> I love them. Yes, yeah, sometimes they can be challenging, but sometimes they can be just as sweet as the babies in kindergarten, you know, or preschool. That's um, true. Um, you have to catch them on the right day. Yes. Um, yeah. But but that's my life, and 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 God is blessing me. I love that you're doing so much uh, for the good in the city there, and we're so grateful. I mean, I'm so grateful that there are as a as a mother of a son. Uh, you know, I'm so grateful that there are educators who are still willing to be in there. Yes. Um, uh, despite all the challenges and all the hardships, I think teachers should be the highest paid uh, <laughs> uh, folk in our economy. And I think that um, uh, I, I'm so grateful. I'm so, so grateful. Our nation is so grateful uh, to to what uh, the gifts that you give our children and, and the way that you stand in the gap. But um but you do that not only in the school system there, but um, in the church, but to just be someone who loves it, you know, it's very yes. easy, it's very easy to get to a place where you, you just become jaded and, and over all the extra stuff and the, the hardships that are put upon you. And I can 
see and tell and knowing you and hearing you talk that you, it's your joy. You, you enjoy the students. Yeah. So that's, that's a gift uh, I know to your community and to all the students who've come through uh, uh, your classroom. All right. Well, we are here today to give a teaser out to everybody who is maybe on the fence or some people who've already signed up to join us in Orlando. We get um, uh, registrations by the day. We're so excited. Our first time since 2019 to gather together. We're going to be in Orlando. We're across the street from Universal Studios. You can come early and bring your babies and have a vacation at the same rate at the hotel three days before and three days after. What's better than that? Um, what's better than that is Pastor Rob is leading a workshop. Amen. So you <laughs> tell us, give us a little foretaste of what you're going to be talking about in Orlando. Well, um, I have I have chosen for a topic the value of a crock pot in a microwave generation. Ooh, okay, I love um, that. I think my my overhead title is "Dare to Dream After 60. Yes, ma'am. And um, we live in a in a very fast world. And in the fast world, you only get a glimpse of the glory, a glimpse of the victory, a glimpse. Um, when you put it in the, in the microwave, you real quick, you can get a taste of what those French fries is going to be like. Okay. You can get a, a taste of, of, of the chicken that you put in the microwave. But something about cooking in that crock, pot and you season the food and it cooks over a long period of time, it gives the food a chance to soak in all of the spices and all of the flavor. Yes. Um, it, cooks, it, it, it cooks out the water and it takes in the seasoning. And, and when you bite into it, it is something that people... It, it, in my generation, talk about grandma's cooking. Yes. There's a difference between grandma's cooking and um, what the microwave put up. Yes, it's done when you put it in the microwave. Yes, it can have a, a taste, but the flavor mm. that has savored into the meat when you take it out of the crock pot is everlasting. I love that. So if we take that and transfer it to church and spirituality, and when we look at biblical women of age, mm -hmm. focusing on, on two women, Naomi and Sarah. Okay. Sarah had been in the crock pot for 10 years <laughs> before she was able to bring forth a new nation. Okay. And that new nation was after God. Oh. Naomi had went through her life, birthed sons, had husbands, had daughter-in-laws and um, lost it all. Yeah. Ready to settle down to think, um, think about, I would say, and this is just me reading into it, the end of her life. Mm. Roof comes along with her. And now she got to reimagine life with Ruth, a daughter which she had never had, mm -hmm. and how they're going to survive. Mm -hmm. After 60, how am I going to take care of me and someone else? Yeah. And then I thought about it. She was the one who told Ruth how to get get her Boaz. She did. <laughs> so, you know, after mm -hmm. after a while, you learn some things over time. You being did. in that crock pot can cook you, can teach you, can can inspire you in ways oh. you never thought. That is so good. I mean, it goes back to what you were saying about needing young folks. I mean, but young folks need over 60 folks, you know, because yes. there's life we haven't lived. There's, 
uh, I, I just included myself in the young folks, which is <laughs> well, that's okay. I, would, I probably will put you in the young folk category. <laughs> but but the idea that we need each other and the story of Ruth and Naomi, there just isn't a better one. You know, mm -hmm. I, I always chuckle a little bit in wedding ceremonies when they use that passage. You know, where you go, I'll go. Your people will be my people. You know, all that. Yes. In the wedding. No, that's that happens between two women. Yes. Uh, uh, Naomi and Ruth. And you exactly. She decides, you know. But that's a loaded enough. statement. That's yeah. a loaded statement. That's a loaded statement because she's got to take on the burden of of helping them both uh, to survive back in her homeland. So mm -hmm. I love that. That's going to be I'm going to be in the front row for that talk. That sounds really <laughs> interesting. Ooh, uh, you guys can post questions if you have any questions for Pastor Robbie and we'll share those for her, uh, share those with her. But um, I'm excited about that. I think that's a message that a lot of us can need and, and can take back and use in our lives. Um, I know that's an anointed word. Tell me what you're most looking forward to um, about Orlando and, and to being there together. I am most looking forward to socializing with other women from across the United States and across the world. Um, the I was at the last convention in 2019, um, and um, it was just to see women excited, looking good, dressed up, giggling. I don't know if you just sit back and just see, just listen to women. It yeah. is it is encouraging in itself. Yeah. Um, the the I, just the excitement of being together, socializing. That's yeah. what I'm looking forward to. Just socializing. Yeah, I mean it's it's a real thing. Um, uh, even when we do it every year, every couple years, this is a time when we've been apart. We've been, yes. been physically together, and so I'm excited too to wrap arms around people. And yes. just that, like you're mentioning, that dynamic of when women worship together, when women come together to study the word and to and women preachers and women worship leaders and and women fashionistas and all that. Yes, together, yes all of that. Really dynamic and powerful, uh, powerful experience to be a part of. So I'm so glad to have been. Uh, raised up in that. And I'm so um, looking forward to being there with you, with our committee, yes. um, with the other women leaders and all the women from around the world um, who will be with us. Uh, anything else you want to share with us or uh, that you would say to women and encourage them to join us in October this year? I will want to just say, come out. You will not be disappointed. Even, you know, women like shopping. We like eating. We like, there, 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 there's places that we can go, the vendors that will be in the hotel or you can shop. You don't know how many purses I have bought <laughs> from vendors at the, at the um, convention. Um, shoes, sandals. I've purchased some of everything. Um, yeah, and it's, it's up. just fun, huh? We got you hooked up with shopping. I mean, yes. what else? Like, there's shopping, there's sun, there's sisters. Um, and the sun, word. And the <laughs> word. Yeah. I mean, like all your all your favorite things are there. Um, right, right. And so I just I just encourage everybody to come and, and, and fellowship with us. I guarantee you, you will plan to be back again. Here you go. You heard it. Um, from the mouth of this saint to you all, I hope we see you there in October. You can go to our website today, christianwomenconnection.org and sign up for this amazing convention happening this October 13th to the 16th in Orlando, Florida. Pastor Robbie will be there. I'll be there. And yes. Everybody is going to be so ready to celebrate and be together. Yes. We hope you join us. Hey, thanks yes. for jumping on with us today. Thank you. And Thank we you. will... Pastor Robbie, I'll be seeing you very soon. And yes. uh, for the rest of you, we hope you'll tune in for our next live when we uh, interview uh, Priscilla Williams, Minister Priscilla Williams, who'll be another workshop leader who'll be with us. So amen. For being with us today, Pastor Robbie. Thank you for interviewing me.
Good. Allowing me this opportunity. Thanks for being here. Bye-bye.